Who's going to stop the Capitals? Nobody. Your Locked On Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello and welcome into this edition of Locked On Capitals. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. As always, this podcast is free and available on all the major platforms, including the Sirius XM app and on YouTube. And I want to thank you for making this your first listen each and every day. My name is Dan Holmey. You can find me on Twitter. It's at DanCaps218. You can find the show on Twitter. It's at Locked On Caps. And the best way that you can help grow the show is to subscribe to Locked On Capitals on YouTube and comment anything down below. I would love to talk Capitals hockey with you one-on-one, and we can do that on subtext. Just check the show description for more details. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. So in this edition of Locked On Capitals, we talk about how this team continues to keep rolling as they down the Detroit Red Wings. It took overtime, but they found a way to get it done as they have found a way to get it done for the longest time. The Capitals now are 6-1-0 and in their last seven games. If I had told you this is how great the Capitals were going to be playing last month, you would not have believed me or the month before, but they're finding a way to get it done when these games matter the most. And it's interesting, these people that talk about the NHL and what teams are going to do good and what teams are going to do bad, all of them said the Capitals were going to be horrible. And they're all left now scratching their heads. I watched a video with the guys from uh, Spit and Chicklets podcast, and they're like, let's talk about the Capitals for a minute. They're just defying odds and all logic. And how are they getting it done? They're finding a way to getting it done. And the litmus test, the measuring stick for this team was tonight against the Red Wings. It wasn't easy. And if you're an everyday of the show, you know I talk about that I don't want it to be easy. That's what we'll talk about a little bit later. We will talk about how Charlie Lindgren was huge once again for the Capitals. Tell me if you've heard this before, but Chucky Sideburns was clutch once again. And then a little bit later, I will talk about the players' thoughts on why the Capitals are playing so well. But again, tonight, wow, finding a way to get it done. It took overtime. Ultimately, I don't care. I wish the Flyers would have lost in regulation. But in any event, the Capitals are now sitting in an excellent position. And like how how I started off the show, who's going to stop the Capitals right now? Who? Nobody. Uh, There's not a team coming up here that I'm fearful of. I know they got the Maple Leafs coming up and the Bruins. And, you know, kind of the thing in the back of your mind is, well, the Capitals struggled with the Maple Leafs last time. Nonsense. The Capitals struggled with... The Red Wings last time, they struggled with the Jets last time. They're finding a way to get it done. Dylan Strom, clutch, huge for the Capitals right now. Connor McMichael, uh, even Mirishnashenko. This is a team that, uh, you know why uh, that the NHL insiders are left scratching their head is because no one saw this roster coming. No one saw Ivan Mirishnashenko being on this team. No one saw Hendrick Slop here, uh, Mike Scarbosa, these other guys. No one saw that. They saw this team as being this old team that we've seen for the last few years. But then all of a sudden, Brian McClellan and the Capitals, they threw a curveball and said, try hitting this. We got some great old players, some great young players. They're finding a way to get it done. Talking about the game tonight. Wow, what a victory. It took over time, but ultimately, I don't care. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Dylan Strom and the Capitals won it in OT. This is a huge win over a good Red Wings team for a Capitals team that had struggled against playing with them the last time. This is why this is a new identity for this team. And as a Capitals fan, a lot to be proud of. This game definitely had a playoff feel to it because so much was at stake. 
the Red Wings, they wanted to throw the kitchen sink at the Capitals, and they did, and they grabbed that sink, and they threw it back at him and said, not this time, not in our barn. We're going to take you down, and they did that. The Caps are two points up on Detroit for the wild card. Second spot with a game in hand on the Red Wings. They're one point behind the Flyers for third in the Metro with two games in hand on the Flyers. Another team that is defying odds and expectations the flyers under the tutelage of john tortorella even though he's had some kind of crazy post-game press conferences um and just press conferences general he general he's getting that flyers team to go in places that no one had thought so a lot of surprises out there uh, the capitals are su- are surprising the flyers are surprising there is surprises all over the place the capitals are getting it done dylan strom huge for the Capitals. I talk about him all season that we knew he was going to be good. He didn't get the qualifying offer from the Blackhawks. Huge for the Capitals. A windfall for the Capitals. Strom scores twice for his 24th goal of the season. It was Strom that scored the overtime goal to give the Caps the big win. Pumping your fist. Yes, if you weren't screaming at the TV, then I don't think that you have a pulse. You might want to check it. This game felt a lot like the game against the Jets, where it was kind of slow for the first two periods, but the Caps found a way to turn it up in the third. I will say that towards the end of the third, they took their eye off the ball, the puck, if you will, a little bit, but they found a way to clamp down and pick up the win. Nick Dowd was huge for the Capitals all season long, but he got the Capitals on the board first, scores his ninth goal of the season. It gave the Capitals a one to nothing lead. Four of Dowd's nine goals this season have been game opening goals. That's some of that inside analytics, that data that is kind of unexplainable. It's just what Nick Dowd does really well. Nick Dowd score first, but Alex Debrinkit did what he does best, and that is score on the Capitals. Debrinkit, a bit of a small man, but knows how to score a puck. He found a way to get past Abe Kubel, and it was a layup for the Catman, one to one. So there was some pushback. Uh, and if you went into this game thinking it was going to be easy, well, you were disappointed. But again, this is what we want to see from this team is some pushback, the back and forth, back and forth. Put the team through its paces and see what they have in the tank. David Perron, again, finds back the net 2-1, to one, uh, sneaking it past Linger. And this was a huge defensive breakdown for the Capitals as Charlie was in the splits and then sprawled out. No one was out there bailing him out. And again, I'm going to say it. It's not too surprising that if Darcy Kemper or a lesser goaltender was in net, the Capitals would have lost this game. And Connor McMichael had the answer. He found a way to get a pass line. It was his third goal in four games. Clutch. And uh, Alex Ovechkin behind him, grabbing him and just, you know, shaking him with so much excitement, kind of like a proud father moment. I think that this is reassuring for Alex Ovechkin because there was a lot of questions about his career. There was a lot of questions about what direction the Capitals were going in. A really great moment. Connor McMichael scores his 17th goal of the season. It ties it up 35 seconds into the third. McMichael has scored three goals in his last four games and has eight points, five goals, three assists in his last eight games. Getting it done. This young talent that I talked about These are the players that the insiders that think they know the game so well didn't see coming. Uh, Connor now has points in his last eight games, but Patrick Kane, yes, that Patrick Kane, Kane tied it up for the wings and the game required overtime. A guy that was a steady Eddie for the Blackhawks for so many years, had a cup of coffee with the Rangers and now is on the Red Wings. Another guy that had a hip resurfacing procedure done is still showing he is a lethal threat in the National Hockey League. The Red Wings were pouring it on and it was a struggle for the Caps, but the Caps didn't lose focus. They kept that laser focus and kept it in there. They pushed out the thoughts that, you know, kind of crept into my head like they're making it to the overtime here. They're going to find a way to screw it up. I almost kind of envisioned some player from the Red Wings scoring up the puck and the Capitals leaving defeated. But that was my negative projection. I had to push it out as the Capitals are, you know, shaking up the way that I think that, yes, they can do it. And if you think positively, oftentimes positive things will happen. Dylan Strom came up huge 
Dylan Strom uh, game scores the overtime game winner and was a huge thing for the Capitals. Uh, talking about that, that's how the game ended. Dylan Strom being huge. He gets the game winner, but he also scored two goals in the game. Dylan Strom scores his 24th goal of the season, and it gave the Capitals a 3-2 to two lead. It marks a new single season a career high for Strom, previously held in 22-23. Uh, so it was quite a game for Dylan Strom. Uh, again, you know, he gets two goals on the night. Uh, if he would have just got the overtime game winner, that would have been enough. But he is killing it out there. Strom has scored 14 of his 24 goals this season in the third period. So it was a tough thing for the Capitals, to be sure. Uh, the Red Wings, they weren't going to lay over. They weren't going to play dead. It did require the uh, overtime. I thought, you know, potentially maybe the shootout, but that wasn't the case. Dylan Strom was clutch. Dylan Strom would show up clutch again and give the Caps an absolute huge win. Dylan Strom scored his third career overtime goal to give the Capitals a 4-3 to three win over the Red Wings. All three of Strom's career overtime goals have also come this season. Uh, also 11-22-23 versus Buffalo and 12-20-23 versus the Islanders. Uh, so just a huge night for the Capitals, a huge night for Dylan Strom and Charlie Lindgren and just everyone involved that this team continues to knock it out of the park. Defying odds. Uh, I say that a lot in this show because that's what they're doing. These insiders that think, you know, I know what's going to happen. This Capitals team is not going to even make it to the playoffs. They're going to have to go ahead and and, and you know, crumple up their papers and their thought process about who this team is because this team is changing minds and it's turning heads. And I think we've just seen the beginning. All right, so coming up here straight ahead, we will talk about Charlie Lindgren, huge for the Capitals. He was huge once again. How is he getting it done? And what does he mean for the Capitals? I'll discuss straight ahead. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED lights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the price you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Live at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on TV all day? Do you have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest sports stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire T TV channels app, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network your team every day. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So Charlie Lindgren, Chucky Sideburns, the outlaw, was huge for the Capitals, making a lot of save, like I talked about, that I don't think a lot of other NHL netminders would save. And if it was not for him, the Capitals would have not won the game. It wouldn't have required overtime. Uh, they would have just lost. But one of the other things I'm going to say is that if the Capitals' defense had played better, I don't think it would have required overtime. I think the Capitals would have won it fair and square. And the one game uh, goal that I'm talking about in particular was the one that uh, David Perron scored uh, with the huge defensive breakdowns for the Capitals. Uh, Charlie was in the splits and sprawled out, and no one was there to bail him out. And there was that look of defeat on Charlie Lindgren's face. He kind of just laid in the net for a while and stared up at the screen like, what is going on here? But he was able to have that mental toughness 
and keep the Capitals in the game. One of the most difficult positions to play in all of major sports is the netminder. It's easy to get rattled. I've seen some of the best to the best get rattled. The ones that can keep a cool head are the ones that will prevail and help their teams win. I saw it in Braden Holpe. I've seen it in other ones. And the ones I'm going to go ahead and mention are the guys that if they get pulled, they break their stick, uh, you know, going down to the dressing room. Those are the guys that got rattled. And because they got rattled, that is why they got the hook from the game. Usually the cool-headed guys, if they get pulled, they look upset, but they sit on the bench. You can gauge a lot about a netminder based on their actions. And some of the hottest heads out there, those are the ones that will struggle with having consistency. Darcy Kemper was a guy that's let that way as well. So you can read a lot into a, a player's demeanor and their success rate based on the, you know, the resting pulse rate and uh, are they constantly in fight or flight mode? But Lindgren has been a busy man lately, mainly because he's the consistent one in that it was his 12th start in 14 games and a tough decision. I got to imagine for Spencer Carberry to a certain extent, because, you know, Darcy Kemper's like, Hey, I'm the guy that you're paying all the money. I'm the guy that's going to be here for a long time. At least that's what my contract shows. Why am I not getting any starts? It's got to be frustrating for Darcy as well. We have to push those feelings of concern for those players to the side and say, I want the best man in the net in it. That has been Charlie Lindgren. Lindgren finished the night saving 30 of 33. Lindgren made quite a few saves tonight that a lot of other goalies wouldn't. Again, thank you, Brian Clint, for not trading Charlie Lindgren. I, that was one of the ones that a lot of the people had circled for being on the move because at the time, not so long ago, at the trade deadline, Many people perceived that the Capitals were out of it, and they're just going to sell everyone. They're going to get Nick Dowd out of here. They're going to get Mantha and Kuznetsov and Abe Kubel and Edmondson, and, and a few of those players did leave. Uh, but the ones that are here were the right ones to save. Nick Dowd, I'm really happy he's here. Charlie Lindgren, really happy he's here. Um, and, you know, for the most part, you know, you take a look at Mantha and Edmondson, that's fine that they're gone. Charlie Lindgren was the key piece to have here. And, you know, I've spoke about on the show that they have Hunter Shepard and Clay Stevenson. We don't know if they would stand up to be the same kind of netminder uh, that Charlie Lindgren is. So uh, ultimately, I'm very, very happy that the Capitals did the right thing and they held on to Chucky Sideburns on the big team. The goals that slipped past Charlie weren't his fault. There were defensive miscues and errors that made it such the Capitals had to go to overtime. If the defense had been dialed in, there's no doubt in my mind the Capitals would have not required overtime. Again, I think they would have won it fair and square, but I don't want to, you know, rain on a parade. The Capitals won a big game. I'm just talking about how they could play better in the future. I'm talking about the possible pitfalls uh, going into the playoffs. You know, when you're going to be playing some top tier upper echelon teams that you can't continue to have these defensive miscues. Uh, we know that Charlie Lindgren is that brick wall in net, but we don't want to put him under too much pressure because even some of the best of the best will fail from time to time. Charlie Lindgren has bailed the Capitals out on multiple occasions all season. Why not let let's us do a solid for him and not put him under duress so much. I understand that the Detroit Red Wings are a really, really good team, but they're going to need to find a way to figure it out. But all things considered, a great game for the Capitals, a dogfight out there. And uh, we knew it was going to be this way. But ultimately, the thing that makes me happy is the Capitals were the victors in this case. I'm not talking to you about an overtime loss or this or that. The Capitals keep rolling. They keep winning games that many had not circled them for winning. I talk about that all the time on this. You know, the kind of the, the the sea change on this whole thing was when the Capitals took down the Canucks. That opened eyes. You know, everyone's like, wow, look at what this team is doing. And they were doing it on uh, the backs of guys like Charlie Lindgren, keeping the Capitals in there. Um, so it's just a really great thing for the Capitals. Keep riding that hot hand. Again, I talked about the, how they have the Maple Leafs and the Bruins coming up. There's a gap in between those games. I want Charlie Lindgren in every one of these games. He will give the Capitals the absolute best chance at winning games. 
Happy to have Charlie on this team as he continues to be ultra clutch when the Capitals need him the most. All right, so coming up here straight ahead, I've talked about my thoughts on the Capitals, but what are the players' thoughts on how they're playing in general and what is Spencer Carberry's thoughts? I'll discuss straight ahead. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your f- first $5 bet wins. Now listen, sometimes you're watching some of these games and you're not that into it. Open up the FanDuel app, put a little bit of money on the game, all of a sudden, Games are that much more exciting. That's a two hundred dollars bucks to use if in point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. That's really huge. Two hundred bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. It's really huge. That is why I love FanDuel. So just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So the Capitals are rolling. They're playing so great. But what do the players, what does Spencer Carberry think about this team? What are his thoughts about how the Capitals are getting it done? Carberry says, the resiliency is amazing to watch of this group of men. It seems very similar but also different every night. It is the young guys pushing the old guys. It's the old guys teaching the young guys what to do in these high pressure situations. It is a perfect marriage and it's living in perfect harmony and the Capitals are knocking it out of the park. Nick Dowd evening says, every game feels like a playoff game at this point. This is our playoffs right now. They know what's at stake. They know that they struggled earlier in the year, and subsequently they are kind of, you know, still trying to stay in it. They are in it, but they cannot be complacent. Complacency will get you eliminated from playoff contention. So that is the right attitude by Nick Dowd, Spencer Carberry, and the Capitals. Connor McMichael says, we keep finding a way. That's our identity now. We just find ways to win no matter how it looks. That were, was his thoughts on the 4-3 to three overtime win over Detroit. Huge. And uh, taking a look at it, the Capitals, like I talked about, top are 6-1-0 and in their last seven games. And there is good news for Capitals fans. Not that you need much more because the Capitals were killing it tonight. But they are going to have a key offensive contributor in Sonny Milano. He skated this morning at the morning skate in his trending Uh, on the path of coming back to this team sooner than later. And also, also, I know he seems like he's been gone forever, but Tom Wilson comes back in three games at the perfect time. He can rest up, be good to go. Uh, I did see the footage of him uh, practicing at Capital One. He is putting in extra work. The video footage I saw was with him and Ethan Bear. So he will be fresh. He will be good to go. He will be ready to help this team. Uh, talking, you know, just let's reflect here for a moment. And what this team has done is nothing short of amazing. You take a look at it, you know, let's take a look at the Western Coast road trip, the last one. Uh, there was a lot of doom and gloom as we took a look at it. The Jets lost three to nothing, crushed. They lost seven to two to the Oilers. We're like, man, this was just a mirage. This Capitals team is not that great. Oh, but there's more. The Capitals then took on the Kraken. They took them down 2-1. to one. And the Canucks, that was a huge one. Another game by a score of 2-1. to one. The Flames, another dogfight. The Capitals take down the Flames 5-2. to two. Okay, so they skipped and they or they fell a little bit uh, to the Maple Leafs. And they fell to them by a score of 7-3. to three. But they brushed their shoulders off as they did the improbable by taking down the Hurricanes by a score of 7-6. to six. The Jets, a team that blanked them the time before, they blanked them out by a score of 3 to nothing. And tonight, the Capitals take down the Red Wings by a score of 4-3. to three. A huge thing. This is the Red Wings that took down the Capitals by a score of 8-3 to three 
on February 27th. So to say that, you know, uh, life is nothing but a big, you know, rep a repeating cycle, you know, I lost to this team, I'm going to lose to them next time, not the case. So just given the fact that the Capitals lost to the Maple Leafs last time does not mean necessarily that they're going to lose to them this time, that the Bruins are a good team, but the Capitals are really good too. And if there's one team that the NHL at large should fear, it's the Capitals. It's a team you did not see coming. It is the guy, the Capitals are the guy that's waiting for you in the dark alley. You know, you're walking, you're feeling secure, and all of a sudden, who is that? Who is that in the dark alley? What is it? Is that a Rock the Red a red Capitals jersey? I shouldn't be afraid. Oh, uh oh, he's coming after me. He's putting up a bigger fight than I thought. I did not see this Capitals team coming. Look out for the Capitals. They are that person that's hiding in the shadows in the dark alley waiting to thump you when you need to the most. I'm talking about you, Maple Leafs. I'm talking about you, Bruins. The Capitals are coming. You better be ready. This team is headed to the playoffs. If you're not drinking the Capitals Kool-Aid now, crack open a can. This team is hyped. I'm hyped. We're going to the playoffs. I believe it. And it's a hard thing to even say out loud, considering that it's been an up and down ride. But I really do believe it at this moment right now that this team has what it takes. Listen, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, your only daily year-round podcast covering the Washington Capitals. And I want to thank all of you that listen on the audio side and watch this on YouTube. You are what makes this show successful. When you're done here, head on over to Locked On's 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. All right, once again, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Dan Holmey, and I'll see you again next time.